When it comes to fight stick manufacturers, maybe you think of Konba, who's been making sticks for a while, and Hori as well. Man, they've been making sticks since Super Nintendo days, right? There's also Vitrix, definitely a high-end product there. And the Madcast, the days of the TET2, and, you know, sorted others, of course, right? But if you go on Amazon, I'll bet you come across today's brand, and that's Mayflash. And they're also very popular over on the Reddit Fight Sticks subreddit. So, we're going to be taking a look at not one, not two, but three Fight Sticks. So that'll be the F300, the F300 Elite, and the F500 Elite. I'm going to be explaining you know, what's good about them, what's included, and you know, go through some lab time, do all the stuff I do in my reviews. So stay tuned and let's find out if one of these products is for you. Let's get started with first impressions. And to lead off, we're going to start from our base model F300. And if we take a look at it down here, uh, we've got a pretty standard Vulix layout. So it's you know fairly close together. Uh, you've got that kind of elevated plateau sort of layout that Vulix has. Uh, and a lot of sticks come in Vulix layout, so if you're shopping elsewhere, you're probably going to find a lot of joysticks with this. On a hitbox, you have more of a noir layout. There's a couple sticks out there, say the Pearl, uh, that have this that same layout. But Vulix, there's nothing bad about it. Uh, if you're shopping for a stick, this is usually what you're going to come across. Anyhow, you've got a nice inset start button here, so you know, if you're mashing pretty crazy, it, you're not, you have much less risk of hitting that start menu and disqualifying yourself or something like that, or otherwise disrupting yourself. Uh, for options, this is a little smaller, but I'll go through them from left to right here. We've got a toggle for kind of mode. So for PC, you're gonna be using this top position, that's X input. On the middle position, you're gonna be using that for the external piggyback controller, or if you've got one of the adapters that's available for this, uh, you'll slide it to that position. And if you're on PS3 or you want D input, then this bottom position will work. But I'm gonna leave that up there in X input. All right, for our second option, we have X, Y, or D-pad. Now, obviously, this is not going to emulate analog input. It's just going to let you kind of fake it, right? Um, so if you've got games that, for some reason, want analog input, I think Ultra Street Fighter 4 does this. Uh, you can toggle it to that and at least get around the menus and play the game. But almost everything else just uses D-pad position. And I do like there's a nice satisfying click when you push something into position. Uh, for Turbo 1 and 2, uh, this is a speed control, so I think it said Turbo 1 is like 15 presses a um, second or something like that, and Turbo 2 is 25. Uh, I'll have to check the numbers on that, but basically, slow turbo, fast turbo. That's all you need to know. Uh, up next, you have the turbo button, so it is kind of a turbo, and then you've got it turned on as long as you hold that on. And then if you want to turn off, there you go again. Uh, and here's your select, share, back view button. Uh, also, you've got a guide, PS home button there. Uh, there's a little light here. I believe that's for turbo. It does. There's no indicator that you're actually plugged in like a status control light or something. Uh, and if you press these two together, you get a touchpad. Uh, I am noticing there's no L3 or R3 buttons, so if you like that for your training mode, um, they're not here. <laughs> Sorry. You may have to set you know, one of these side buttons to do it uh, in lieu of that. Anyhow, just looking around the sides of the stick, nothing really on those sides, but on the back we have you know, more things of interest. Uh, one, this is where you'll plug in your piggyback controller. So. You plug in an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 controller and you can play on those systems. Uh, you don't need one for most other systems, I, I believe. I like uh, PC, you definitely don't. PS3, you don't. And I don't think Switch, you do either. So I'll have to confirm that. Anyhow, you have an attached cable, which I fully expect at this price point. Um, and the nice thing they've included is this cable wrap. So. I, I've ragged about it before where we have loose cables 
and there's no way to manage them. But this you can wrap around, you can wrap it around your hand, and then wrap the you know the little Velcro around that, and you're good to go. As far as the bottom side, uh, we have these nice rubber pads. So I feel like on a solid table or whatnot, this should fit pretty well, not slide around, which is very essential when you have a joystick. There are these little screw holes uh, that are empty, and I believe that's for something in the package we'll get to here in a minute. There's also six screws that are holding this in, and we'll dig into the interior of this momentarily. So that's a look at the F300 so far, but let's take a look quickly at the box. So you can see this guy, um, you know, shows the systems again. It's, you know, nothing really fancy, but it's very functional. And on the back here, you have some charts for how the buttons get mapped and some features that are here, etc. So, you know, it's, uh, at least it's got the documentation, which I always appreciate. I know sometimes it can be feel silly. It's like, yeah, I know what those buttons are, but eh, for me, it's just nice in case you have to hand it off to someone who doesn't know it as well. On the inside, besides our packing material, um, we've got a USB to USB-C adapter there, female to male. Uh, and you have a USB A male to a micro, so you can plug in those external controllers. Okay, so this is what goes into those four holes are these extra rubber feet. Um, I'm not sure, maybe, unless you just need the table clearance or something like that, uh, why you want these, but you know, they're there. Uh, this is very nice, actually. Having a Octogate. Uh, for those of us who grew up on American controllers and are used to that circle and just used to mashing against this, you know, the edge uh, with filthy gate riders, then an Octodate kind of simulates having a circle gate. Um, it works for me fairly well. And finally, we have some documentation. So that's always good to have a little manual. And of course, you can get this online, but uh, having it available, you know, in the palm of your hand, you know, maybe you slip it in part of your bag. Um, just in case you need to know how to do something with it or whatnot you know, while you're learning it. Uh, there is also this insert for PS5 compatibility. So if you're looking for a stick that can play uh, Street Fighter 6 on the PlayStation 5, uh, that got you covered, though you do need to buy another piece of kit. Um, so what they're saying is option one, you can get the Mayflash Magic S Ultimate, which I think is going to be the real solution here. Uh, that way you don't have eight minute timeouts, that way you, it just works, as long as you keep it updated, I'm sure. There seems like a war between Sony and third party companies that don't get approved, etc. But um, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, there's also their Magic Boots converter, but this says it's for PS4, so that seems like it's more a solution for PS4 games that work on the PS5 and not PS5 native. So I'll be mindful of that. Uh, and finally, by third-party PS4 controller, again, I, unfortunately I don't have a PS5 to test this, but I feel like that's going to run in the same problem. So, uh, there's also a list of third-party compatible PS4 controllers here, and how to be compatible with the Xbox Series X and S, so there's that too. Alright, that's what's included in the F300 box. Let's move on to comparing it with... Uh, it's, slightly older brother, bigger brother, the F300 Elite. Let's lead off by talking about the F300 Elite's box. And you'll notice it's a little bit grayer shade, and there's one big thing that sticks out is the notice about, hey, this has all sandwich parts. And that's because that is really the biggest difference between that and the F300. So instead of the clone parts that you're getting in the F300, you are getting the all Sanwa experience, I guess. Uh, on the back here, you have kind of the same stuff, features here, a chart of compatibility here, uh, etc. So there's that. Um, what's included in the box is identical to what's in the F300, so I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, if we look down here, and I apologize for the angle, this is the only way I can get it, is we have pretty identical dimensions here. It's pretty much the same body, just, you know, injection molded into a different colorway, right? So this way you have the distinction of having this little beige thing. Um, 
versus the old black here. Uh, I like the color se selection here. Uh, doesn't quite remind me of the old PC days of all beige boxes, but, uh, you know. Uh, now, the, all the option buttons are the same. The cable is the same. You have the same wrap device, which I love. Thank you very much, Mayflash. Uh, feel like no one listens to me on keeping your cables under control like that, and that's a nice plus when you at least don't have a removable cable, well, even if you do. Uh, you, know, you have that wrap, and it helps out so much. Anyhow, so if all our options are the same, all our buttons are the same, okay, what's the actual difference? Well, again, it's those sandwich parts that come equipped with it, so you don't have to go back and mod it yourself. Um, now let's take a comparison, because actually I feel like the F300 base model, the stick on it is not bad, the buttons are not terrible. Um, and just to give you an idea of the sound comparison here, so... So there's kind of a lower sound, lower pitch here, and a higher pitch with the Sanwa. Um, I feel like the Sanwas just give a little bit more spring back than these guys do. And I don't know if that really affect play, but it's really kind of a preference choice. So um, if these are some buttons, you decide, oh, I only want the F300, and you know the buttons are okay, they're fine, or maybe I want to upgrade them later or change them to something entirely different than Sam was. Um, we'll see if that's a, there's that option once we start digging into the internals here. Uh, anyway, the stick though, it's definitely one of the better Sama clones. Uh, I don't feel, you know, a huge uh, difference as much as I thought I might. Like when we reviewed the Dobe sticks, those sticks were pretty bad, <laughs> have to admit. And but this feels, you know, pretty decent. Um, and it's it's just been really hard for me to come up with you know, how do I describe how these are different, right? There's maybe a slight bit more precision in the Sanwa I feel uh, over the clone, but is this very serviceable? Oh yeah, definitely. And I'm pretty sure you can upgrade the F300. Now, one thing that was described on the Elite that was not on the F300, uh, at least on the box, said, hey, there is a lockout mode, so you can lock use of start and select and all that stuff. That way you have no chance of disqualifying yourself in one of those really important terms you're going to. Uh, but I haven't seen how to activate it yet, so I think we'll have to figure that out in the lab. Anyhow, that is pretty much the F300. Again, same size, very comparable weight. We'll see that exactly here in a minute. Um, Otherwise, yeah, you're just pretty much getting the different colorway and the sandwich components. So let's move on to the F500 Elite and see the difference there. All right, let's take a look at the F500 Elite's box real quick. Uh, very similar design to the F300 Elite. You know, that same gray, same, hey, you've got all Sanwa. Uh, there is an F500 base model. So, you know, there's that. Obviously, this is a bit bigger than the F300. And on the back, actually doesn't have that button chart. I was a little surprised, but it does have the features, kind of an outline of uh, where, what buttons and what systems you're compatible with, so there's all that. Uh, it has actually the same accessories, so again, not going to review that. Or, you know, if it's the same, why bother? So let's take a look at the unit itself. Again, you have a Vulix layout, sandwich stick, sandwich buttons, and, you know, they feel pretty good. They feel like sample buttons, so if you like those, then you're gonna like this stick. If you don't like these, and maybe you just need to upgrade or change them out, do whatever you need to do. Uh, again, you have that inset button, but then a nice addition I'm seeing here is an actual acrylic layer. And yes, on Focus Attack, there is the F500, uh, and the base F500 has this as well, I believe. Uh, you can get artwork for here. So that's a real big step up for especially this price point. Uh, looking at the option buttons, we've got a slight difference here. 
Uh, still the same X input, you know, external controller select, and then PS3, and also has SNK there. Uh, this is a little different here. You have, instead of just X, Y, and pad, you can actually select right stick. I've never seen a game that actually needs it, but maybe in World Tour mode, sometimes that might be useful now for Street Fighter VI. Uh, but otherwise, you can go left stick, directional pad, or right stick. Turbo 1, Turbo 2, we've seen before. Turbo button, we've seen before. And now this is a little separated out, so we have a separate touchpad button, a select button, a PS Home guide button, and then, of course, the start button. Uh, still no L3 or R3. Uh, uh, I wish that was here, uh, but I am noticing there is a mode button and a turbo button, so that should be a good indicator of, hey, you're actually connected, uh, or you know, turbo's actually working. I think the others... Well, the others do have turbo LEDs, but this is the first one to have a dedicated, you're plugged in, powered on, and connected correctly. Uh, there are a few other additions here as well. So, up front, we have a little port that's kind of curious. It's actually for the Mayflash uh, wrist strap attachment, so you can have rumble with this. It looks like it'd be kind of wonky to me, but I don't know. Uh, there's a mute button and a headset jack, so that's kind of cool. Uh, if you have a pair of earbuds, a, you know, long ago you'd use them on Android where they had the triple rings. Uh, you can plug right into there and get microphone and such. I, I don't know if it'll pass microphone. It seems to indicate it does, so well, let's see. Uh, nothing on this side, but on our other side, we have our storage cable. And curiously enough, they didn't go for the Velcro. I don't know why, but we've got a twisty time set. Uh, these guys will save your life right here. <laughs> Velcro one rep. So I'll probably be putting one of those on, whether I keep it or not. Anyhow, uh, I've opted to just keep the cables wrapped and then use a USB extension cable. Uh, so it's kind of nice, has a breakaway in case I trip over it or something like that. Uh, anyhow, on the back, again, we have the USB-A port for plugging in that external controller. We also have uh, sort of the same pad layout here. So you've got these nice rubber feet. Um, they feel pretty good. Uh, it's a nice tacky rubber and the four holes here, again, uh, for the screw-in little feet if you need that bit of height. Anyhow, uh, other, the accessories in the F500 box are, again, the same, so no worries there. And I think so far, if I want the wide boy, you know, the F500 is the way to go. And just to compare, you know, the size difference here, uh, you can see it's a couple inches or so between the F300 here, or the Elite, and the F500. And yeah, so we'll definitely get that in measurements. You'll see more of that. Uh, so this guy is a bit bigger, but I feel like it will play in the lap better, which is if that's the way you like to play, then you might want to invest in the extra real estate this guy has. Uh, and of course, being a little bit bigger, it does feel heavier by quite a bit, actually. This feels like it could be heavier, but this feels definitely a bit chunkier. So take that into consideration. We'll have the weights here in a second. All right, so that's our first impressions. I'm feeling good so far. We've got a, you know, what feels like a good workhorse joystick to me. And you know, that's definitely something you can work with. I do really wish we had the options for L3 and R3 for recording and playback. I know a lot of people who get into fighting games really love having that feature and just having the extra button sometimes really helps out. But in a pinch, in mo most games you can get away with six buttons and then just use these two for something else. But eh, it's just it'd just be nice. Okay, that said, let's get some measurements and weights, and then we'll get them down. We'll get them opened up, take a look at the internals, and then get them down the lab. Let's take a look at the dimensions for the F300 first. All right, for width, we're looking at about 11 and a half inches across, and then this way we're looking at about. Eight and a half or so, nine, if we include some of the cable. Uh, there's just no getting away from it. You know, that's going to add some length that way. And as far as height, we're looking at about four and a half inches, including this. But if we 
buttons and include a link or something like that, you're just shy of, it's about two and a half, two and a quarter inches just with the base. Uh, so, you know, it's a decently sized stick and almost going to be identical here. There's no difference with the Elite, but just to confirm, yep, 11 and a half, about eight and a half, nine with the cable, again, four and a half or so with the joystick, or about two and a half, two and a quarter height there. So identical there, of course, as I predicted. But, you know, you want the empirical test, right? Let's take a look at the F500 and check on it. So across, we are looking at just shy of 14 inches. Definitely quite bigger. And this way, we're looking at mm, about eight and three quarters. Just, you know, because we don't have a cable in front, we don't have to worry about that. Height, I imagine it's gonna be different. Yeah, it's about just, sh just shy of four and a half. And then for height without, the joystick in case you, in case you, you know, install a link again, uh, you're looking at about two and a half or in change or so. So height wise, they're all the same. This guy is just a little bit wider than those other guys. Let's take a look at the weight for these three sticks and start off with the F300. So we'll just stick it like that and we're getting three pounds, eight ounces, which is pretty healthy weight for a stick if you wanna throw it around. For something mid-sized like this, I expect that figure. So let's try its big brother. Curiously, slightly less, 0.2 ounces difference. So might expect that with the difference in the parts, uh, but not the rest of the construction. All right, let's take a look at our big boy. F500, five pounds, 5.4 ounces. So this isn't something that I really think would be a challenge to carry around most of the day, but it might get a little you know, heavy towards the end if you are going to a major event or something like that. Um, so these aren't lightweight by any stretch of the imagination, but they're not super heavy or anything like that. I, I think they're a pretty respectable weight. Let's take a look at some sample Steam Deck setups. So right now I haven't connected it. Obviously you can use the included A to C cable to connect to Steam Deck. And we're starting off with the F500 Elite. The nice thing about this is you don't have the cable in front, so you can actually put it up closer for those really crowded environments. All right, let's go ahead and just take a quick measurement here. Uh, I think you can get away with about 13 and a half inches here. And then of course you need the width, which is about eh, just short of 14. So it is not the most uh, cramped environment <laughs> friendly, but let's see how the F300 does. And this will apply of course to the F300 Elite as well, since they have the same dimensions. Now you notice because the cable is in front, you actually have to put it a little bit further back. And if we take a measurement, I think you're adding on just a little bit more room. So you need at least 14 inches there, whereas it is a little bit narrower, so you can get away with about 13 inches. Um, so that's about how much room you're going to need uh, for the F300 there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the internals of the Mayflash stick, starting with our good friend, the F300. So when you're doing this, I do recommend, especially when you have a lever involved, having a towel. That way you can kind of put the button end down like so and keep your lever protected. Anyhow, there are six screws that hold in. I've already removed five of those. We'll just, uh, undo the last one here and you can use a proper Phillips 2 screwdriver here to do that and once it's out just set that aside I always recommend having a cup 
ice cube tray, a little fishing tackle tray, whatever helps you keep your components organized so that way they don't go flying. Anyhow, once we've done that, we just need to ply this panel off and I just use this little flat bit. Uh, you can use a proper you know, flathead screwdriver or whatever device helps you get in there. Just try not to mash that stick too much. Uh, not like it's going to break really, but you know, if, especially if you have a good ball top there, you might want another towel or something soft to protect it. Uh, this wants to be a little obstinate, but with a little plying it should come out. There it goes. So, it can be done. We'll set that aside for now, and let's just take a look at the internals here. So, obviously this is where your external cable is going, and it leads back to a, a USB lead on the main PCB here, which connects to pretty much everything else. Uh, you've got a lead going to the option panel sub-PCB, uh, connections to your joystick, and this is a uh, fastener type, so it's not the Samwa connector type. I think if you do replace that, and it looks pretty replaceable, and it looks pretty similar to a Samwa, uh, we're going to need a similar cable, or a similar set of two cables there. Um, not sure if these are JSTPH connectors or not. They look a little bigger than those, so uh, not I think Arcade Shop may have replacement cables if necessary. Otherwise, um, yeah, and these are soldered on, so uh, if you went to replace the joystick, again, you would need something that connects to this properly and um, you know, would connect. You can't reuse this, obviously, because they're soldered on, unless you really want to spend all that time desoldering them. Uh, you could probably just clip it and save yourself a lot of time. <laughs> anyway. Uh, buttons are you know, two lead as you'd expect. Uh, curious that they're using the same color and it's kind of hard to get in there but they are connected via these GST like connectors. Um, so there's that. Otherwise there's some structural reinforcement here and here and the uh, piggyback controller PCB is there. So Nothing too unexpected, uh, other than maybe the you know soldered on connectors, which at this price point I kind of expect. So anyway, let's go ahead and just plop this back down. It doesn't seem to matter. I don't think it matters if you like reversed it or something like that. Um, yeah, they're pretty backwards forwards compatible. Just make sure these rubber pads are out. We'll set that aside for now. And let's move on to the F300 Elite. So I've already taken off all the screws here, just so we could cheat it that much more. And same deal, I'm. this is like the best place right here to ply that apart. Um, it doesn't take much force, just trying to wiggle it in there. And if you have a longer tool, uh, you know, pry tool, that's better. So let's set that aside. Anyhow, uh, very similar layout. We all pretty much got the same control board here, except there's the connectors we had there are different. Uh, we do have a connector here that's going to a you know the SAMA connector here. So uh, if you want to replace this lever for whatever reason, let's just wiggle this free. I don't see any glue or anything on it that would prevent you from doing it. Uh, otherwise, we have the typical square gate. You know, again, this is the options PCB, the piggyback uh, board, little PCB. The uh, external cable, of course, going right back here. It's a USB standard connection, so you white, green, red, black. Um, so, and pretty similar wires. I am noticing that some of these. Did I? Oh, where'd it go? Like, this green cable here does not have the sleeve on it. I mean, that's not necessary. These are just whatever. You don't want them touching, obviously. Otherwise, you're going to trigger that, and they'll just stay on. But uh, this is just missing one. Uh, just maybe missed in production. I'm not seeing it on here. Uh, not too practical to really worry about and try, you know, put it on. But, 
It's just a, something to note. Again, kind of same construction. Uh, again, mostly the differences are these buttons. And just to see if we can compare it really fast, again, to the F300. Let's see if we can get that in the shot. Um, you know, you can see, wait, actually, let me flip it because I want, I want to see those PCBs. Oh, it looks like it was hidden under here, but it has the same connector for Sanwa here. Um, it's really just a matter of, okay, can I find that cable to go to that replacement joystick if you, you know, end up replacing it. So, I want to say our cage shock may carry something that fits the bill. Uh, it's possible to make your own, of course. And, you know, that costs a little bit more money, usually, for a one-off cable. All right, so those aside. Let's set our F300 Elite aside. And let's step up to our big boy. Once again, I've removed all the screws ahead of time, and this is actually easier to remove the bottom panel. You just open the flap on the side and push from the underneath. So that's nice. Um, once again, I think we have pretty similar components, except we have the addition of the little audio and you know rumble wrist strap here. We also have the option PCB, the piggyback PCB. Um, buttons are kind of same, you know, with these little wraps that are uh, a little bit loose in some places, but you know, they're not meant to be tight, really. Uh, standard sandwich connection there, so that's all good. Um, again, some supports here. I'm surprised there's not more up here. And here's your cable compartment, um, kind of what we expect there. Nothing too exciting. I imagine with some work you could maybe fit in a pass-through if you really wanted to and then run that out. Um, uh, something like that. It, it could work. Um, not seeing anything too different. The board is kind of similar, but there's less chips on top. I'm not sure if there's a vast difference there. Um, just to compare once again. Let's drag on our 300 Elite. And yeah, you can definitely tell it's somewhat different board, different layout. I mean, it's kind of a similar form factor, a little bit, a little bit bigger, kind of like the you know the 500 is kind of bigger. Uh, anyhow, yeah, that's uh, what it looks like side by side. Uh, what I want to do now is actually, let's demonstrate changing out this gate. Uh, with Samwa, you just want to be very careful with these, because uh, the tabs usually aren't that brittle, but sometimes the gate on the inside is. I've had this happen. <laughs> so if you just push in those tabs one at a time, you can use a flathead to kind of expedite the process if you need to. And if it's being fussy like this, um, you might just take some wiggling or reseeding before you get it right. That's okay. So, there we go. We have that off. Now let's put that octogate in. And I want to say it's this way with the hole. Eh, no, actually, it should be in the holes kind of on the bottom. This empty space up top. And just... Uh, Press it on. Make sure all the tabs are going in. Make sure you're not going to break any of the tabs because that would make you very sad and have to replace the stick. And just like that, you have your new gate installed. Good old Octo goodness. Ah, there we go. Okay. And just to reassemble, it's just like the others. Just plop that plate down inside the fitting here, make sure it lines up. Um, this one, probably not reversible because of the side gate here, so that's no problem. And I did want to demonstrate, okay, what if we want to put on the little rubber feet that come with it, the bonus feet. Um, you'll just take one of these, run the screw through it that's included, use your number two, 
make sure you're set to the right ratchet mode and just turn until it stops. There we go. I don't think you need to go super tight with it, but that's how you do it. And of course, you know, just to make sure how to put this back on, dead simple. You know, it's a standard screw, so just uh, line it up and do all six. Make sure that's reassembled. Okay, easy peasy. Uh, that's a quick look at the internals of these sticks, so let's move on to the lab. Okay, welcome to the lab. And usually I start off with showing some basic acceptance testing with joy.cpl or gamepad tester, and we'll get to that. But there is one thing I want to show you first, and that is the firmware updates for these guys. Uh, it's good to know how to do it, how to get them into the correct mode to apply the firmware updates, etc. So I'm gonna show you first uh, how to get them. And what you wanna do is just go to mayflash.com and then come over here to support firmware arcade stick. Now you'll have a bunch of these and they're not you know, sorted as especially well, uh, but you can find them if you just do a control F, you can you know, search for your model. And we have the F300 Elite and the F300 here. Make sure you're getting the correct one for your stick. You don't want to bork it. Um, and then you can just hit download and then for instructions, you click on the link here itself. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and launch the updater, and here we go. Uh, if Windows, again, I'm gonna mention this later, brings up smart screen or whatever and says, hey, this doesn't get downloaded a lot, just tell it, yes, you're okay. Now, right now I don't have it connected, which is what you wanna start off with, so I'm using this little USB extender to connect it, and so I don't have to unwrap this beautiful cable job. Uh, just makes my life easier. And what you want to do is hold down this home button on the end and then connect it. All right, once you do that, you can set that aside and you can see that, okay, I am at the correct level. So 1.24, 1.24, I don't have to do anything here, but just to demonstrate the updater and how nicely it works, you just hit update, it will fill the bar and you're good to go. So we'll verify it and what you want to do then is just unplug and replug, and then close the firmware updater. That's it. Uh, just make sure that you do not unplug, power down your PC, do anything in the time that's running. You might want to close all other programs if your PC is temperamental, uh, that sort of thing. So just m be mindful of that. And of course, like I mentioned before, always make sure you're downloading that correct firmware. So don't load the F300 Elite onto an F300, uh, that's bad, or you know, vice versa. Uh, the process is the same for the F300 Elite, so we won't worry about that one. But I will show you how to update the F500 Elite because it is a little bit different. Okay, so we saw how to do the update for the F300 series. Let's show you how to do it for the F500 because it is a little different. So what we wanna do is you can go ahead and download that update here. Right now, as of this recording, 1.13, and I'm gonna run it. If you get anything out of Windows saying, hey, smart screen said, this is not something that gets downloaded all the time, just okay it, it's a safe download. Anyhow, what you have to do is start with them disconnected like so, and instead of holding the home button, you're holding select and start. This makes it kind of difficult to do. I'm just trying to pinch it down like this, connect it to my extension, there we go. And it should see it. Now it's already at that version, so I don't really have to update, but just to demonstrate it, you just click update, fills up the bar, tells you everything's good. It's just that easy. And just point of sanity, you know, don't remove it while you update. And after you update, go ahead and close the updater. And make sure, of course, that you're using the correct updater. Don't use the F500 V2 or the other one uh, for the Elite and vice versa. If, you know, uh, just go ahead and replug it in. You should be good to go. Otherwise, these mode and turbo buttons will be lit together and you won't be able to do much.
just unplug, replug, and you are set to go with the i500 Elite. Okay, now that firmware updates are done, let's go ahead and do some basic acceptance testing. And we'll start with the lever. I'm gonna be in D-pad mode to start and in X input. So that looks right. Okay, good, good. Uh, let's try our analog quote unquote mode. Writing that square gate as hard as I can. <laughs> but yeah, it's doing what it should be doing. We're getting all around that box. And let's go back to D-pad mode. I'm gonna try out some buttons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In pairs. Let's just mash all four. Okay. Interestingly enough, it's not doing the axis thing with these latter two, which is fine. Um, Let's try the turbo function. So this is turbo one, and the turbo light's lighting up, so that's nice. Uh, let's try turbo two and assign that to Y, see if they're any different. No, okay, seems like once you change the turbo two, it's just turbo two, or it's just turbo one. And this thing is blinking a lot more than it does in turbo one, so turbo two is definitely faster. Or at least that's the theory anyway. So select does that thing, start does that thing, and PS Home interestingly does not call down the Windows game menu thing. So that's curious. You might be able to map it in game to something. Right. Otherwise, I think we've kind of gone through the features here. Let's go ahead and turn off turbo. So yeah, it is this typical hold down the button and let it go. Uh, we can set it back to Turbo 2 for fun. But otherwise, yeah, it's feeling okay. There are a couple of things I want to do here. First, let's do some pressure tests just to see how much flex we get. There's definitely a flexible area right in here. Um, now, if I mash, I'm not detecting it. It doesn't really factor into it. When I'm really staying the buttons. There's somewhat, there's a tiny bit of flex. It's not horrible, it's not bad. This is kind of a deliberate thing here. Uh, so I, I guess it just maybe takes a little bit away from the confidence, but it doesn't really impact gameplay, I don't feel. Uh, so I am noticing that this map material does pick up a little bit of oil uh, and such. So might just need cleaning, that's all. I mean, just like acrylic will, maybe this will need it a little less. Uh, it is picking up, it's just something to know. Um, as far as sliding, uh, it is taking a little bit of effort for me to do it, but if I mash, I'm not really getting much motion or anything like that. So that's good. And this is on foam, so let's try it on my more smooth desk and see if it makes a difference. Yeah, there's a bit less slidey. It's still there, but I'm having to really work it. <laughs> Uh, and again, mashing, it doesn't really affect it. So that's pretty good. I kind of expect a similar performance out of the F300 Elite, though I did put the kind of riser feet on it just to see if that made any difference. So we'll be back with that. Moving on to the F300 Elite. Uh, first thing I'm noticing, just curiosity wise, is that in Joy.CPL on the right here, it is showing it again as the same model. So F300, not F300 Elite. And on Gamepad Tester, it actually detects it as the F300 Elite. And Steam just says it's a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So yeah, take that how you will. Anyhow, let's go ahead and just do the joystick test. Oh, come on. You gotta. Wake up there, Joy CPL. All right, it's looking good. Let's go ahead and change to our stick emulation. Yep, that's doing pretty much what I expect it to. Okay, and let's go through some buttons. Two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And there we go. Let's do combos. Looks good. Start. Yep, this is functioning pretty much exactly like the baseline F300, just as kind of expected. Um, turbo, there we go. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, let's test for flexing. Yep, we have the same flex issue. Um, it's just not real as support under there. I mean, it's not bad. Again, I can mash pretty roughly and I'm not gonna notice it. I'm not gonna do damage or anything like that. It has that same matte stuff that it will get a little oily sometimes and you just have to take a microfiber cloth like this and you'll get rid of it. it might not be showing on camera because it's kind of you know small. Uh, but other than that, I did set this on the riser feet like I mentioned. So let's give it a slide test. It's not too bad. And again, I was mashing it, didn't move. Uh, let's do it on the bare desktop. It might be a little easier to slide. Not too much though, but, but again, I mean, I can mash it pretty good and we're not really going anywhere. This is me being pretty deliberate. Uh, the combination of the pads and the weight do a good job of keeping it in place. So that's good. Now, if you are even harder masher than me, then you might have problems. Uh, but this guy can still be lap played if you want. And you know that kind of reduces your worry there altogether. All right, so let's move on to the F500 Elite and see how that compares. Okay, let's do some basic tests with the F500 Elite. And I've got Joyce APL and Gamepad Tester up just like the others. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Of course, that doesn't really match the Joy CPL buttons, but we know that. That's okay. Do them in pairs. Things look good there. Let's try start. PS Home will actually call up that uh, guide menu. So interestingly, this is getting shown as a X input controller, and in Steam, it looks like it shows as a regular Xbox controller. So that's curious versus uh, what the F300 was showing up as. And I noticed in the actual game controller's text, it will show as Universal Arcade Fight Stick, and it kind of gets cut off unless you expand that a little bit. Uh, maybe a minor nitpick, but it'd be nice if it just said Mayflash F500 Elite, so you can actually see it. Uh, uh, you know, not a huge deal. So, one of you had, we're in, you know, DP mode, that looks fine. And if we go to LS, and we get the circularity test. Now I have the Octogate installed in here. It doesn't really affect it. I, that's my personal preference. But we're looking good there. Okay, and then let's try the right stick mode. Again, you're just doing an emulation kind of thing, so it's not really analog. And let's try out the turbo function. First we'll set turbo that. It's, it's reasonably fast, even on Turbo 1. And what happens if I do, does it just change the mode entirely? Yeah, I don't think you can have a mix of Turbo 1 and Turbo 2 set buttons, un unfortunately. Uh, I mean, it's a minor thing, but it'd be nice if it, you know, you set Turbo 1 mode on here, and then Turbo 2 mode on this button or something like that, and it just worked. All right, turbo's off. And again, it is hold turbo, bump, hold turbo, bump, and you're good to go. Uh, select, start. We did that one before. Touchpad's not going to work on, like most times, doesn't work on PC. That's a PS button only. But otherwise, yeah, pretty much what I expected. So we're looking good on the basics. Again, not flexing a lot here, unlike the F300. If I'm getting any flexion, a little bit in the acrylic, sort of. Um, I'm pressing pretty strongly. As far as movement on the pad, you know, I'm having to move it a bit more than I did the F300 just because the extra weight. So if I'm mashing, it's not going anywhere. Oh, did I not? Okay, let's make sure that that's on set. Good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's try it on the bare desk. And again, it takes quite a bit of pressure to move it around. So um, I feel pretty good playing this in lap or otherwise. So 
let's go ahead and get in some games. All right, here we are in Street Fighter 6. I hope you all are getting to play it. Pretty fun game. If you've come to fight, then so fight. let's do some basics. Little dashing. And yeah, we're starting with the F300. Gonna go in order here. Just tapping. <laughs> Feeling pretty good so far. Um, when I'm just mashing, you know, that flexing issue doesn't really come into effect when I'm just mashing pretty hard, just to be sure. Okay, well, let's do some. So those are all working pretty well. I uh, don't have any complaints. Alright, let's see what I can work on. Ah, uh, nope. Oh, not quite. Oh yeah, that's better. Kind of a simple, quick uh, you know, level three combo. Uh, just show up that yeah, this is working pretty well. Start button works. I didn't assign the home button to anything. But select button you can reset with at least. Again, you don't have the L3 and R3, so if you set those up for recording and then playback, uh, those aren't options. But you can, I mean, you might be able to work around that by assigning these two buttons. So uh, there is that. Otherwise, let's go on to the F300 Elite. All right, now we're in the lab with the F300 Elite. Uh, so again, just to show that mashing doesn't really cause that flexion, so I'm not super worried about it. If you are, you need that extra bit of confidence, I'm sure you could find something to insert under here to brace it. But other than that, Let's go ahead and try some... Oh, didn't quite get the buffer. There we go. I was a little slow. So, yeah, if, if you're used to a Sanwa setup, then you're not going to be disappointed with the F300 Elite. I haven't played Ken too much, so <laughs> nothing too fancy here. But I think that's showing off some decent gameplay. Let's throw that guy over there and let's bring out the big boy, the F500 Elite. Alright, let's finish things out in Street Fighter 6 with the F500 Elite. And other than the wider body, I mean the layout is exactly the same, so there's not too much to really see a difference here with. But I figured, you know, check things out with the included Octogate. Ah, okay. Uh, let's just test a... Things feel good. There's 
you can see the flexion that's in the F300, and I'm pressing pretty firmly. Uh, it's not really showing up, so there is that factor if you feel like you know, I should spend the extra money just for the more rigid feel, and you don't mind a larger sled, you know, somewhat less mobile. There you go. Um, let's see, what else can we try? I'm still pretty new to this, I so uh, don't expect a whole lot of flashy combos, but I think that's pretty good demonstration. I'm feeling pretty confident in the stick work. Uh, usually, I can tell when it's not just me screwing up. Uh, in this case, it is me screwing up. So uh, Now, if I were going to mod this further, and since you have the JLF, there's that huge ecosystem of mods available, I probably would get a heavier spring since I'm used to that and probably throw in a link base since I have a million extra ones from collecting all the colors. Uh, but otherwise, you have a good platform here. It's solid. I mean, again, the only th real drawback is no L3 R3 uh, that I'm seeing so far. So let's move on. We're back from the lab and it's time to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about the main flash series here. First of all, let's work with the F300. It's a great base platform to start with, and a lot of things that are you know, good and bad about this, I mean, we're going to be good and bad about the Elite. So let's start with what I liked. First of all, I like that it's a good basic overall stick, right? You're getting a fair amount of features for the price. Uh, you're not getting a removable cable like I would like, uh, boohoo. Uh, but you are getting multi-system compatibility, and that's pretty huge for especially an entry-level fight stick where you might have to buy a whole bunch of adapters, a whole bunch of sticks when it comes to other manufacturers. Right here, you can have it all in one. Now, sure, you do have to have you know, that piggyback controller or the additional Mayflash adapter to make it work on those systems, but you have the option, right? And there you go. Really, if you're playing on those systems, chances are you, you probably have a basic controller that you can plug in, so you'll be fine. Uh, let's talk about some of those other features. I mean, the stick and buttons on here, that's primarily what you're going to be interacting with. They're not horrible. They're you know, pretty good for what they are for the price point. So I you know, felt okay. And we talked about the you know, different positions here. So you have built-in X input, D input, and the, you know, external controller, piggyback thing. Uh, you have a way to select between left stick and the D-pad emulation here. So that can be useful in, say, World Tour mode, uh, and other fighting games might use it. Uh, for example, like Ultra Street Fighter 4, I feel like it likes to use the uh, left stick input rather than the D-pad sometimes. Uh, maybe it's just me and my experience with it. I don't know. Anyway, Turbo 1 and Turbo 2, usually you at this price point especially, you're just getting one turbo speed, it's on or off, right? You, you know, hold the button, assign it, there you go, you've got the speed. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, too bad. Well, at least with this, you have the option to slow that down. For some games, let's say Contra, if you have a turbo, all your shots just come out at once and it doesn't work as well, and then you almost need a slower kind of turbo fire so that it just evenly meters those out, right? So there's that. Uh, otherwise, you've got you know the standard stuff here. Um, I do like the recess button here. I've mentioned it before. So if you're mashing pretty roughly, then you should skate right over it, and not hit it, and disqualify yourself or what have you. Or you, know, you don't want to pause in a heated battle. Uh, you don't definitely don't want to pause in a tournament situation. All right. Let's also talk about the size and weight. I feel like for a joystick platform, this is pretty good. It not as lap friendly as I might like, but it, it's certainly serviceable in that role. I just have to squeeze my legs together a bit more than I would care to. But eh, you know, it's nothing horrible. Uh, it definitely doesn't slide around when on a good surface. 
I mean, I was mashing it pretty hard and it's not going anywhere. Yes, I can force it around, but that's me forcing it, right? You're uh, At some point, as much as I push, I am going to move pretty much anything that's not bolted down to the desk. <laughs> so to be fair, this is working for me. And it seems to work no matter if you have the base rubber feet going for you, or you put in the additional screw-in ones they have that give it a little bit of a raise. Uh, it works all the same, felt like to me, that is just the same. So there's that. Now, what do I not quite like so much about the F300? Uh, and the first and foremost for me has to be there's no L3 R3. And for those of you that like assigning that to different features or functions, uh, it's not available, you can't use it. And that's kind of a bummer, especially a lot of people like using that for record and playback in training mode, and you just don't have it here. Uh, there are some things in Street Fighter VI that use it, especially when you're going through your inventory in World Tour, that you need to be able to press the left stick button, and you can't do that here. You can't do it in any of them, so that's a bummer. Uh, but can you work around it? Maybe. Uh, especially on the PC version, yeah, you can just reach up and press the V key, but if I'm playing on my couch, uh, in my game room or something like that, and I don't have access to a keyboard, not really, you know, it's just painful to have to, you know, break out of my whatever I'm doing in the game, and then, okay, mm, all right, there you go. So, can, it, it's a convenience thing, right? Uh, that may not be the case for playing on PlayStation or Xbox, where you don't have that option. Uh, it might work, and I didn't get to test this, where you can plug in your cable, your controller, and then just use it on there. But again, it's the convenience factor, right? You just want to set it and forget it. And if you're using an adapter, you don't have that choice at all. So if L3 and R3 are super important to you, then this may not be the stick for you. I didn't see a way to add it either. There's no plug-in or anything. You could you know, maybe drill out a button, do all that stuff it's just not there. So maybe there is a way. Leave it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, let's also talk about on the F300 and F300 Elite, there is no right stick emulation. And sometimes that can be useful. By and large, it's not. But something like World Tour might use it. Um, every now and again, really, it's almost non-existent. So not really a big minus to it uh, at all. But since the F500 has it, I'm just like, why can't I have it here? And I get it, you want to save costs, so I, I get the sacrifice. Did mention the flexing before. It is there. Does it really affect anything? Not really. Could you probably do something to prevent it? Maybe put just a, like a support under here somehow. Uh, I don't know what that form that would take. Maybe you have to 3D print something. I'm not sure. But just be aware that it's there and don't freak out because it is there, right? Uh, customization. So I've seen a lot of people on say Reddit fight sticks and such still, you know, they paint, they put stickers on, they put vinyl on, what have you, and that's all cool. But for the person that's not comfortable doing that, you don't want to take it apart uh, to do all that, or, you know, stickers are just the limit for, your, for you. Uh, yeah, you're just kind of stuck and you just don't have many options to customize. Sure, you could replace the buttons and the stick, change them out to have colors you'd like, uh, but without more extensive modification, you're not going to be able to do the customization you may want that you, you have in the F500 series with the acrylic. You can put art underneath. There's templates out there for it and you can go to town doing that. So yeah, you can customize, but not as many options for it. What's next on my complaint list? Well, I kind of mentioned it before, I believe, but this material will pick up oils and such. That's not really a horrible thing. All you need is just a little microfiber cloth and you can buff that right out. So, I mean, and that applies to almost any controller. Your oils are just going to get on it. Uh, it will be noticeable on here as little dark spots and any acrylic, whether it's you know Mayflash or not, you are going to see that those fingerprints appear and you just need one of these. So it's really not a, a Mayflash specific strike, but it is there. It is something you may notice. That's all. Finally, let's talk about response speed. And I know this is 
kind of a esoteric and maybe touchy topic, but I did go on to the RPUBs uh, list to see what the response rates for these guys are. And they didn't have data on all of them. For example, it didn't have data on the elites, but this seemed to be representative, uh, maybe. So, and maybe firmware fixes may fix this. So take this with a heavy bucket of salt. Uh, their listings for the F300 performance, uh, they say it's around uh, 14 to 14.5 millisecond. And for the F500 regular, not elite, you're looking at around 10 to 10.5, so a little bit of a performance increase. I did not notice a whole lot of controller lag in my play testing. It just didn't occur to me. It didn't feel like it was slow or you know, really bad. However, given that a Brook UFB frequently lists under a millisecond, the difference in speed might affect you if you're really, really a stickler for that level of performance. Uh, you know, if you're a casual player, you're probably not going to notice it. And, you know, what does that say about me? But just do be aware that is what they're listing at. Now, how accurate that is, I don't have the means to test right now. However, it's just something to be aware of. If the F300 is the standard edition, the F300 Elite is the deluxe edition. And what do you get additionally content-wise upgrading to the deluxe edition? Already talked about it, but you have a different colorway. Uh, that's something. I do like the contrast of the beige on the black versus the all black, but you know, that's a taste thing. What you're really after though are those sandwich parts, that tournament grade stuff, right? Well, even said, uh, first time player, I'm trying to think of them. You know, they come to this and they're weighing, okay, I want an F300 or I want an F300 Elite. Well, the F300 actually feels pretty good for a clone set of parts. It's not bad. But if you want that extra edge, that extra bit of smoothness, I, I did demo the buttons side by side. These have a higher ping. They have a better response to me. Then you start here and maybe look for it on sale. Maybe uh, just justify the cost in that, hey, I don't have to pay for upgrades later. And that's always nice. So that's kind of really the big thing here. Um, you still have all the same pluses and minuses. Uh, there are two things though that I found out. First of all, the tournament lockout feature that's supposed to be on this, uh, I couldn't find it in the manual. Um, it says how to set turbo, so it's, you know, how it's compatible with other systems, but I never saw how to activate this supposed tournament lockout feature. So I'm not sure how that works. Um, eh, I don't know. So there is that. And number two on the website, it's for some reason mentions that the F300 Elite has rumble feature support and it doesn't have the port for their wrist strap to actually do that with. So I'm not sure how that works at all. Uh, I'm thinking they just copied parts of the F500 Elite text over to the F300 Elite and just said, well, that's good. So probably just a mistake, just needs to be cleared off. Uh, that's all. It, they're kind of minor things, I, you know, I wouldn't hold it against it, uh, but it's just kind of odd they mentioned these features and they're not really documented it, in the least, or they're not there. Uh, I couldn't tell. So maybe that's on me, maybe that's just a bad documentation issue, I, I'm not sure. But uh, for the life of me, I, I couldn't find it. That being said, uh, overall, you've got the same with parts. If you can jump to this, and you're comfortably financially doing it or you know you find it used and you're wondering hey is it a good stick well, yeah it's a good stick uh, i took a third place in a single elimination world heroes perfect tournament for from you know, jm crofts uh fight cave frenzy and i don't play that game very much so take that how you will <laughs> it felt good anyhow uh, let's move on to the f500 elite We've seen the Standard Edition F300, the Deluxe Edition F300 Elite, and now it's time for the Special Edition, the F500 Elite. And this bad boy, this big boy, is, yeah, I think it's a definite step up from the other two, and I'm going to show you why. 
I've already covered some of the features here, of course, and that you have the added option to have right stick emulation. And I've mentioned that Street Fighter VI, World Tour, and maybe a few other games can use this in limited capacities. So it's a nice to have, it's a nice luxury, sure. Uh, but you also have LEDs for indicating that not only you have turbo going, but you have connection, which is really useful. Also, you get to hide your cable if you want inside the door. So instead of just having it hang out and you know potentially being vulnerable, I know that's being paranoid, but you know there you go. You can stuff it in the door uh, and you're good to go. You also have the front panel plugins for audio and I think that only is going to work on PlayStation, but you know at least you have it. And you also have the option for the wrist strap actually has it this time, unlike the F300 Elite saying, yeah, I have it. I, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it at all. So, you know, some nice feature upgrades. You do have an extra option button. And still, just like the rest of them, though, you don't have that L3 and R3, which is disappointing. Uh, would be useful to have. Even if I could uh, have it on the board and then make my own cable or something and drill out the case to put it in, just having that option would be nice, but it's not really tenable, unfortunately. Um, there are workarounds, at least on PC, but I can't say the same for console. So uh, if you have to have those buttons, then you probably have to look elsewhere for a stick, unfortunately. Otherwise, what else is nice about this guy? The added weight, if you love lap play, it just feels really great on the lap, uh, more so than the other two because, well, look at the width and it's got a full two pounds extra over it. Obviously, I don't think any of these are going to be considered compact, but they are definitely, they're portable enough, right? You're not, it's not something you're going to break out on your, your airport trip or your car trip too readily, but it is something you could play in your hotel room or elsewhere, right? Uh, you're going to tournaments or you know, your local events, yeah, you could bring this guy and it wouldn't be too much of an imposition. It wouldn't be too much to travel around with. Obviously, you have to mind the stick unless you install something like the Link EX or something like that, but there you go. Again, you have sandwich parts in this guy, so you can modify it to your heart's content, uh, which is great, just like the F300 Elite, and you can, you know, Add a heavier spring, change the actuator, maybe install one of those Shuriken V2s I've heard so much about. Huh? Yeah, there's that too. But otherwise, I think this is a great overall package. Yes, it does cost a little bit more, but compared to other uh, sticks out there, yeah, you're still getting an excellent deal. So if you're looking for something, you, you know, you're a first timer even, and you, you know, want to get into this, and you're not afraid of spending a little bit of money to have a quality product, I think you can start here, uh, unless you just really, really, really need that L3, R3 functionality, uh, then you might have to look elsewhere. But otherwise, I think this is a good start for you. Occasionally on Reddit Flight 6, I see people ask the question, well, shouldn't I consider the 8-bit Doe arcade stick over the F300? And my answer is maybe. Uh, just comparing them side by side here, they are about the same size. The 8-bit though is a little bit wider, and of course mine is modded, <laughs> because of course it is. These are not the stock buttons, of course. These are Samitsu's, uh, both for these little macro buttons and for the main buttons. I put in a sample lever. Uh, stock, I would say the lever included in the 8-bit though, I just don't like it, even as much as the base F300 lever. Uh, and the buttons, the buttons I say, they're about on par. There's um, not a huge difference. Uh, if I had to give the edge to one, I would say actually the F300 buttons are maybe slightly better. Um, but what does the 8-bit though have that the F300 doesn't? Uh, the first thing is you can map L3 and R3 to these buttons, and that's what I usually do. Just, you know, if you want to do those training mode recording, etc., or even just other functions, uh, having them here is really nice. Uh, I do kind of sometimes reach for these as a start select because I'm dumb, even though, you know, those are right here. Uh, obviously, you can mod this, and you can mod this, so that's kind of a wash. Uh, there are 
certain limitations with what sticks will fit in the 8-bit dial. Of course, you know, there's always limitations, and I don't know what's compatible per se with the F300. Obviously, a Sanwa should be, as long as you have that cable. Um, there is a cable, I am sure, on Arcade Shock that fits uh, the 8 bit dough, but you can kind of get away with finagling the regular one, I think. Um, the thing really is, this F300 is way more compatible with different systems. So it will play on the Switch, it will play on PS4, will play on Xbox. Uh, the big draw of the 8 bit dough, though, wireless, uh, right out of the box. This does cost a little more. Uh, you're getting the F300 for about, you know, $55, $60, that neighborhood, whereas this is going to be in the 80 to 90 range. And of course, that depends on where you are. Um, so you have to consider that as well. And this is really only Switch PC compatible. But it does have the NES aesthetic, and that's what really sold me. I, when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have that and put the Super Famicom color scheme on it. So there you go. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question, or at least gets you thinking about uh, which one's more for me, you know, the 8-bit dough or the F300. Now that pros and cons are with, we're back on the couch, and it's time to talk about my two concluding questions. Who are these sticks for, and who are they not for? So let's start with kind of the negative, who are they not for? And first and foremost, these are probably not going to appeal to your premium fight stick, or your kind of fight stick snob, right? Uh, those of you that are looking to go into the top eight of Evo, you don't see a lot of Mayflash there, probably none at all. You're gonna see your Kanbas, your Horis, your hitboxes, things like that. Uh, suspiciously absent are Mayflash. And, okay, that's a rare breed, and I get it. It's kind of expecting these value sticks to be something they're not. Um, but it's also just a consideration. You know, or if you have higher-end fight sticks, are they worth adding to your collection? Eh, they're not exactly very flashy, right? Uh, we got pretty basic black, blue, there you go, and, and basic beige, gray. It's nothing that's really coming to life. It, it just appeals you know, to a baseline. Right? It can be used by anybody. It doesn't stand out too much. So if you're looking for something that's really exciting, has innovative features, is the fastest on the market, these aren't it, right? Uh, if you're looking for something that's more portable, well, sure, these guys, you can take them around. They're not super heavyweight or anything like that. They're not obnoxiously large. Uh, this, you know, getting a little big, but if you need something that you can play on an airplane or other confined environment, these, it's probably not going to be for you. Maybe something like this is for you. This is the SGF Bridget, and we're going to have a review of this soon. So, again, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Just another teaser. <laughs> anyway... Getting back to these, yeah. Again, it's something you can carry around, but tight spaces, uh, maybe some of the situations, it's just not good for. Uh, what other things? I mean, I'm kind of... These are almost cheap shots, I feel, because it's something they're absolutely not. Um, with a lever, I do like a bigger box, just because it adds the stability. Um, well... More practically, if you absolutely need that L3 or R3 button, uh, or both, then yeah, you don't have it here, unfortunately. And there's no really good way or easy way to mod that in or, you know. So hopefully when we get future revisions of these, we can have those buttons. Uh, just add them to the option row or something like that. You know, it, they're probably going to be more useful in the future, like I've mentioned, in Street Fighter VI World Tour, sometimes you want to sort your items, you, and there's other things that left stick button does. Uh, and yeah, there are some workarounds you could do, but it is nice just to have separate buttons on the stick so you don't have to fuss with it. Uh, if you need, again, the fastest performance, these, yeah, uh, as you saw in the numbers, uh, there's only partial ratings there. There's not ratings for the F300 Elite or the F500 Elite, but the F500 V2 and the F300, 
uh, do rate a little bit high on the lag factor, so there is that. Um, now, I kind of take those numbers with a grain of salt because during my play testing, you know, I didn't feel it overly laggy or overly obnoxious. I played with other zero delay boards and you can notice that they don't function well. So, eh, uh, they're, yeah, they're probably not going to be the fastest. I think a Brook in here or GP2040 would add that little edge of smoothness and quickness, but on the whole, it's not disastrous here. All right, so let's uh, go into more specifics of you know who this is not for. And I, I know this sounds probably over negative. Uh, it's not meant to be. These are, do have positives that outweigh it, and I'll get into that, trust me. Uh, with the F300, if you need, and the F300 Elite, if you need you know, the ability to easily add artwork, you don't have the acrylic panel, so you're gonna have to take out pretty much all the stick and buttons, if, you know, do a paint job or vinyl wrap or something like that, which you know is kind of painful to do. Whereas the F500, you can get the artwork printed and there you go, you put it underneath here. Of course, you might have to remove these buttons and at least a uh, ball top so you can slide it on, but you have the option, right? Um, also, if you want more premium parts, kind of I mean, sort of what I alluded to before, you know, this guy is not for you. Do the parts in here feel pretty good? Yes, and I'll talk about that. But if you're looking for that tournament grade, again, uh, sandware experience or whatever parts you want, that doesn't have it, right? I still think these feel better than the 8-bit do arcade stick, the stock one. Um, so there is that. For the F300 Elite, it's kind of the same thing with customization. It's only specific weakness I can think of for why you wouldn't want it. Um, and for the F500, um, yeah, I, just it's you know bigger. So if you need something more compact like these guys, then yeah, you're gonna have to make that decision. Do I want something that's kind of just under midsize to kind of this midsize configuration? Really, that's all I have to complain about, uh, at least for who do I think these are not for. So let's get into who these are for. All right, that's enough negativity. Let's go into what I feel is the target market for these sticks. You know, who are these sticks for? Well, first of all, I feel like there's kind of a balancing act between price slash value, features, and quality. You know, you can have many features, a lot of quality, it's dependable, reliable, etc. But of course, that's usually gonna drive up price, right? And simultaneously, you can also have a lot of features and a low price point, but they're never implemented well, right? It, it just feels like uh, th these aren't working, they're not, you know, it's not documented, it's it's not reliable, etc., etc. So you're, you're missing out on one part of the well, triangle. And I feel like these Mayflashes pretty well hit most of those values, right? They're kind of aiming for the center, maybe leaning towards the value end, but at the same time, you're getting a a pretty good quality stick, even if you start with the F300 base model. Uh, this is a great place to start for first time fight stick buyers. You know, you're getting into fighting games, you've heard a lot about you, the advantages of using a fight stick, and you're wondering, you know, is that for me? I, I didn't grow up on it, or maybe you did grow up on it and you're ready to get back into things. Well, here you go, $60, $70, maybe less on sale, and you have the way to play with classic controls the way God intended in Street Fighter VI, for example. Uh, and it's also multi-system compatible, which is a huge benefit. You don't have to go out and buy Brook adapters for all the systems you want to play on. You can just plug in your controller, or if you just want to buy that Brook Magic adapter for whatever you want so you don't have to do that, uh, you can do that too. And if you feel like later, hey, I want to upgrade, I want to have different color buttons or you know, different buttons, uh, I want to put in a legit Sanwa or some other stick that'll fit, feel free to, you just need that adapter cable and you're set. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, if I want to buy into it, 
it's good, great. If you feel like, no, eh, that's not for me, I want to go for maybe an all button or just stick the pad, well, you're not out too much and you can always resell it. Now, if you do feel like jumping in both feet and you're not going to mind spending a little bit more, then you can step up to the Elite models or you know the F500 Elite, and there you go. You're starting off with better components, so you don't have to upgrade them down the line. You may just decide, oh, I feel like getting different color buttons or you know a different color ball top or switch out to the back top. You know, since you have this the JLF in here you have the freedom to explore that ecosystem. So if you want to change out springs, actuators, gates, you know, install one of the Shuriken V2s, you can do that. So you have a great starting platform for uh, experimentation to see how do I tune the stick to my needs. On top of that, these guys are nice, hefty. Uh, they're, I feel like, the right size for a lever-based stick. You know, when you get an all-button fight stick, you can go really tiny, you can go fairly large, uh, because they're not going to be pushed around a lot, even if you have not, you don't even have rubber feet on the bottom or anything like that, since you're directing force down. With the lever, though, you know, you can jerk it all around. Uh, yeah, funny. And with these guys, uh, they didn't slide even on foam. I wasn't getting appreciable sliding without trying really hard, so that gave me a lot of comfort. That just felt very, very reassuring to me. So I can recommend them just based on that. So if you're looking for a budget option that will work on multiple systems and is a workhorse, then these guys are worth your consideration. Hey all, if you like the video here, you found it informative, helped you make a buying decision, or you know, you just like the kitty here and he, he wants to go, I know, please leave a like. We really appreciate it. Also, if you have questions or just suggestions for a future review, please leave them down in the comments. And if you tag my name, uh, I'll answer in usually one to two days. Also, if you're looking forward to our future content, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. You know, YouTube refrain. Anyway, I'm looking forward to see you guys in the next video. Or maybe just a few systems, PS4 or you know, and PC, for example. Having Xbox compatibility, PlayStation compatibility, PC compatibility, and multiple others. Yeah, I, I love you too. I love you too, but you gotta shut up. It's bedtime. It's way past bedtime.